I am chasing walleye. And if that fails, there's bass, pickerel, and crappie. What I'm using today, we got I got four poles for myself. I went to a little heavier line because walleye got very sharp teeth, so I went with 14 pound Berkeley trialing. This one has a walleye crankbait. Walleye prefer long and slender stick type crankbaits or banana shaped. I have the banana shaped deep diver, you can call them a reef runner. Walleye also prefer contrasting colors, you don't want just a plain single color. They like two to three colors or more on their lures. I prefer orange and yellow over everything. Walleyes can see these colors the best. Orange is number one, and then yellows, greens, and pink. So they like bright colors. I got that just for walleye and crank, for crankbait walleye. Then I have this pole with just a regular crankbait for bass and pickerel, crappie or whatever. Just a bobber model A, also 14 pound line. Then I have one pole just for crappie. This one only has 10 pound line. I got it set up with a Bobby Garland, 1 8 ounce chartreuse jig head. The Bobby Garland color is electric chicken, which is pink and green mixed together. And I added a beetle spinner to it, a spinner, to give it a little extra flash because it is a cloudy day. And then this one is for walleye only also. It is a four inch yellow twister tail with an orange and yellow jig head. Now, when I fish for walleye, you want to use, the, it is very important to maintain contact with the bottom. This is a half ounce jig head. You don't want to use no sixteenth ounce or quarter ounce or even eighth ounce. None of them are not heavy enough. You want to, for that thing to hit the bottom and you want to be able to feel yourself picking it up and down because a lot of the fishing I do with the twister tail is when I'm anchored and doing vertical jigging only. Uh, that tends to get less snags doing it that way. If you're casting using this method and just dragging the bottom, you'll go through 50 jig heads in a matter of two or three hours because you're going to get right in the logs. So this is more of a vertical jigging approach as, that I can't do with the crankbait. So I'm trying to cover a lot of different areas. I can easily switch these poles uh, and grab another one without having to worry about tying stuff on over and over. I should be able to use these four things all day. If I get this hung up, I'm going to just put another twister tail back on it. If I get the crappie one hung up, it's going back to crappie. So all three of them poles got the 14 pound line except the crappie's got 10. We got uh, the anchoring system. It's going to be set up. We're about to launch right now. We are floating the Black River, the lower Black River. We're going to float from Sportsman's Park at Highway 60 in Poplar Bluff down to Dan River Access, which is about two miles north of Highway 53, uh, which is a conservation area with a boat ramp. We're going to float down to there and already arranged a taxi to pick us up for only $11 to bring us back to our car when we're done. Then I'm going to stay there with the canoe and all the tackle and guard it while she drives back, or while the taxi takes her back to the, to the car and then she'll come back and pick me up. So I'll just only have to wait about 20 minutes at the most. It's gonna be a good day. It is a full moon, November the 4th. The high temperature for the day is gonna be 75 degrees, which is a blessing for November. So we got a lot of advantages. You don't have to have bug spray. You don't have to wear long sleeves. And it's not cold, but the fish will be biting. It is a good day according to the almanac. It's not best, but it's at least good. So that's, uh, you know, that's good. So we should be able to get into something. It's also gonna be a cloudy day with only a mild 20% chance of rain. So I'm just taking a gamble. But lately when the weather man has been saying, even when he's been saying there's an 80% chance of rain, we haven't gotten jack squat. So I'm hoping the, uh, 20% doesn't add up to anything. Okay, you can go ahead and put in, uh, whatever you want back in top of the black box. Oh yeah, oh, no matter.
matter what, I'm going to have a good day because it's pretty. Green water, leaves to look at. Mm. You got lucky. Yeah, I'd quit till we get around this eddy over here. It's shallow right now. You can see the river's going downhill right here. That's why. Wait till we get where it widens. We get around this corner. You're in the swift water. It's not deep right here. Not deep enough to fish. You gotta wait till we get over that shelf. You can see where the shelf is. Oh, he got off again. Oh, he's back on there. Got it. <laughs> yeah, it's a star. <laughs> Flathead bait. Should I keep it? For catfish bait? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, big crappie. <laughs> yeah, man, that's a nice one. Oh man, did you see it swimming? We're keeping him. Yes, that folks, this is about a 12 incher. He's 12. Nice black crappie on the Bobby Garland electric chicken, chartreuse jig head, and a spinner added to it. Caught him on this. Nice 12 inch black crappie here on the Blower Black River underneath an old abandoned bridge. And it's still got the, uh, I guess the old creosote soaked railroad ties underneath it that's still set today. And I'm sitting here jigging, I guess get everything out of the bucket now. So I can put him in there. And those uh, ties, I'm sitting here vertical jigging on this eddy. It's a nice crappie. We've been fishing about 45 minutes and haven't had any luck. I had two spotted bass get off. Well, I tell you what, he fought too. I thought it was something. I didn't think it was a crappie at first, the way it pulled. Don't put the scissors on the bottom of the canoe. They'll get wet and rust. Put them on top of the black box. Them two. And then you got a jig head laying on the... Don't, don't keep the scissors on the floor. No. Oh yeah, I got another one. Oh, it's a, no, it's a crappie. Yeah, All right, folks, crappie number two. A little smaller, he's about seven inches. I don't think we should keep this one. Too small to keep. Another black crappie on the Bobby Garland again. There must be a whole school of them here. I'm actually anchored so I can keep fishing the same spot. And they seem to be on this eddy over here. In the stomach? What in the world? That's a, that's a hybrid. That's a half sunfish, half bluegill. Folks, I, caught, I just caught about an 11 inch spotted bass on the bandit. Blood red eyes too, boy. Caught in kind of a shallow hole. We're just letting the river take us right now until we get to some of the holes worth anchoring at. This is just like a shad, Tennessee shad. Oh, this is a bomber model A, I'm sorry, not a bandit. Just a Tennessee shad color. Bass here, folks. 
Not the kind I'm after, but I'll take him. Oh yeah, it's a pretty one. Oh, that's a fat one. My gosh, let's put him in the bucket. Keep this one. It is a real large mouth too. Yep, large mouth. Not a bad catch. We're gonna keep him. That makes two fish that we've kept. Boy, he's been eating good. Still a sand bottom. It's well, it's sand mixed with mud, but that's all sand right there. This river just the problem is it's too much wood. Okay, we got a good rock bank coming up there. Way up there, a big rock corner. Oh, yes. Oh, did you see the other one? It's bigger. The other one's bigger. <laughs> the one following him was really big. Twice as big as this one. <laughs> oh, shit. All right, folks, I got, this is a spotted bass. Another tire <laughs> on a tree. Be careful right here. Another tire. Jesus Christ. Like. 100 tires in here. This guy's only about 11 inches, so I'm gonna put him back. He ain't quite big enough to keep, huh? What do you think? Keep or no? Yeah, too small. All right, that's fish number four or five. The one fall on him, right where I almost had it to the canoe, was twice the size of him. That's the one I really wanted after I've seen it. Right there, drop off. for a minute. It's probably our last best chance right here to get something worth having. I had a bite, and he's on there. Oh, please be a walleye. Honey, maybe. It is. It's a walleye. I can tell by the way he's fighting. Yep, walleye. Finally, my method worked. Oh, it's a sauger. Oh, oh. You grab him. Just don't grab him by the teeth. No, not like that, by the body. Yeah, by the body, yeah, by the belly or something. Wow, right where I knew he'd be on that drop off. We're keeping him, he's definitely 15. He's about 17 inches. All right, folks, I got finally got what I came after. A nice sauger anyway, it's not a walleye, but it's a decent sauger. Okay, I got it, he's, He's about eight, actually he's about 18 inches. That's a nice saga right there, man. That's about as big as they get in these rivers here in Missouri, folks. Wow. Finally, I anchored in the right hole and knew exactly where he was. They love them drop-offs. That's a nice saga, hun, look. Don't you think? Decent size. 
open the bucket, we'll throw him in there. All right, folks, we're gonna keep this one. That's a good dinner right there. <laughs> My lure worked. First cast. I could tell it's what it was by the way it was fighting. It was right there on that hill. set the hooky but just wasn't there but he was pulling it and they have a unique bite I know that's what it was it was a soccer or a walleye it's the only thing it was they like them rocks that's what it is it was probably our last chance On a, hey, we get to keep another fish. That's a white crappie. I think. Yeah. Uh, open the bucket again, I guess. Finally. Alright, folks, white crappie. Yes. Yes. Oh yeah, slab. 10 incher. Nice black 10 incher. Oh yeah, this tree paid off. Now we had a good trip now. It finally that finally had a we got a meal out of it. All right, I had a I still had the same thing. Well, no, I have changed this once. I got a pink and yellow football head. Yeah, there was a tree right here, and I knew there was more, more, more than one crappie in it. Yes. I felt him. As soon as my lure fell, he already had it in his mouth when it was about three foot down. Yes. Oh, man. Oh, whoa. This is a big crappie. That's a white bat. No, it's a crappie. All right. Hell yes! The evening bite is on, folks. It's weird how you can fish for three hours and not get nothing hardly, except the sauger, a couple bluegill, and then all of a sudden, you just get to the magic hole. Oh yeah, he's a 10, 10 inches. 
<laughs> we got it. Oh man, we did good. We ended up doing good, huh? Yeah, we probably scared them though. That's the problem. Or not. <laughs> oh yes. Oh, this one's 11. Oh yeah, another black. This one's 11, 12 inches here. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's, he's 11. Not quite 12, he's dang close though. Beautiful crappie. It ended up being a good day after all. I caught more fish in three minutes than I did the whole day. Ain't that weird? Probably just scared them now. All the waving from the canoe, making waves and splashes. It all comes to an end. Up in the canoe, just making waves back and forth. Or not. Yes. Whoa, that's a weird looking crappie here. Real fat, like a bass almost. Weird. He's thick. This one's only about eight inches. Just barely capable, but he's real thick and stout. Real heavy. Another crappie, folks. That's five crappie in three minutes. That'd be good catfishing too. It looks like people have done it because I see some trash and a rope. No, it was, we was going for the bank. We were steering right toward, toward the bank. Steering the wrong direction. That's a nice place right there. Here's a walleye hole, look, see the drop off? See how it's only an in, a couple inches deep, looks but one foot deep and then boom, it just drops off out of nowhere. Nice here, I, don't, I think it's a large mouth, not a spotted bass. Oh man, dang, that was a good three pounder there. That was a bigger one than we've caught all day for, as far as bass. But he flopped off about halfway to the, to the canoe. Okay, that's good. I can, I can get up there. 